Welcome to the Taj, home to statesmen and celebrities for over a century. Wow. Remember always, here at the Taj. Thank you. We hope you'll have a good stay. Guest is. If you follow me. The evening of November 26, 2008, was a typical busy Wednesday for the Taj. More than 500 guests were registered at the hotel. Another five to 600 were attending functions in banquet halls or sitting down to dinner in the hotel's 10 restaurants. Shortly after 9 p.m., an explosion rocked the Leopold Cafe just around the corner, less than 200 meters from the Taj. Two young men pulled out automatic weapons and began firing. Chaos has erupted in Mumbai with multiple bombings and armed gunmen rampaging through the city. Look, I don't think you understand. There's been an attack and we're not safe. Switch off the lights. Under the tables. Terrorists have laid siege to the landmark Taj. With as many as a thousand guests and over 500 staff trapped inside. We should try to gather whoever we can. Many of you have families at home. There is no shame in leaving. I've been here 35 years. This is my home. You don't know how many there are, where they are. Local police are simply not trained to deal with attacks of this magnitude. Police! Police! Hello! Don't open the door, it's them! 
out! My kids upstairs. Do you have a family? Yes. And I hope to stay alive and see them. No one's coming for us. We go down the back stairs and straight out the service exit. If they hurt us, we'll all die. We take our chances. Let's get We all are. But to get through this, we must stick together. Nine thirty-five or nine forty was the first call I got from one of my chefs, and he thinks some shooting is taking place. A person has been shot dead outside my restaurant. Then we heard another gunshot, and I said, I told him on the phone only. I said, just close all the kitchens, all the restaurant doors. They were banging the door. They were alerting everyone, come out, otherwise we'll shoot you. There were few guests. The, who you know they were scared and they came out by putting their hands up like, and they started hitting them. They started harassing them. It was horrible. The situation, the entire scenario was very scary. We couldn't uh, judge at that time ki what is exactly happening in the hotel. It was a literally war situation. You can hear grenade lobby ground. You can hear the gunshot also. So we was really elaborate seven course meal and that was sort of the setting the mood there was warmth there was laughter there was a perfect setting for for a nostalgic farewell and a perfect setting for a nice welcome and i heard what seemed to me which is an untrained ear like firecrackers in the hotel we started getting these text messages and phone calls uh, there were some gunmen on the loose the only logical thing to do was to close the doors and um, just stay put. Malika came to us and said, we think there's a problem, we're not sure what exactly it is, but I request all of you to be on the ground right now. The, the level of calm and composure that the staff displayed was amazing, it was absolutely amazing because they had the presence of mind to even advise us saying, couples please separate, don't stay at the same place, just be in different corners of the room. 65 lives at stake, so can't take a chance. So obviously we were in touch with security all the time and uh, had a lot of alcohol in the room. So that helped a little. This went on the whole night. We were on the floor with our hearts in our mouth, with debris falling all around us, the noises of you know firecrackers all around, and all through. The staff kept their composure, kept coming to us saying, do you want some water, do you want something? Well, I was scared, but um, there was something more important to be done. And this went on till 4 or 5 in the morning when the room filled with smoke, so we had no choice but to find a way to escape. The entire corridor outside the hall was on fire, so there was no way we could get out. The fire guys were outside and they were dousing the fire on the sixth floor. And we happened to see Mr. Khan downstairs as well. So he sort of ushered the fire guys to us. Uh, we sort of climbed onto the ledge and did some stuff which in today's normal day I wouldn't be able to do, but we sort of came onto the ledge, climbed down to the ladders which by then the fire brigade people had come. The staff insisted that we would go first, guests would go first. And they kept like that till all of us had come down and then they all came down. Well, in a way, because I was there, I was looking after the function, I was, in, I was responsible. I could have been the youngest in the room and I know at one point of time I was the youngest in the room, but uh, I was still doing my job. I come from an army background, not myself but my father, who was a, he retired as a general in the army. And he used, often used to say when I was even appointed here as the general manager, he used to often tell me that you are now like the captain of, captain of the ship. And I think that's the way you think, that, that you, are the, you are the captain of the ship and uh, if the, you have to be the last one to leave, and if it sinks, you sink with it. We did not know the scale of the attack, we did not know uh, what exactly was going on, where they were uh, at that moment and there was total chaos. My colleagues were trapped with guests in various places asking me what, we, what should we do next. I can't explain it, 
There were no manuals, there were no uh, instructions for what should be done under the circumstances. And so what seems to have happened is individuals from the waiters to the managers of the restaurants all had this uh, goal of uh, let's get the guests to safety. <laughs>